one of the things I keep thinking about, especially as we finally, God willing, maybe touch wood, et cetera, et cetera, turn the corner on this pandemic, is that there is going to be an afterward. We're going to one day sit down and start asking ourselves some of the questions that either we don't have time to ask ourselves now or where we kind of understand that you're not going to get honest answers because of politics, right? Politicians always want to protect their butts. That's just the way it goes. But when this is over, when there's no more excuse of an emergency to be used, we're going to have a reckoning. One of the parts of that reckoning is going to have to be our relationship with China. And I'm not, I'm not one of those guys who go, oh, I blame China for the virus. It's the China virus. No, no, no. I don't mean that. I mean, particularly Canada's relationship with China, because you might have seen this. This was in testimony uh, given to Parliament last week. A timeline on our vaccine procurement efforts. Canada originally had partnered up with China to develop a vaccine, the CanSino vaccine. We were going to develop it in partnership with uh, Chinese health authorities, and then we were going to manufacture it here in Canada. That deal blew up in our faces at the end of May of last year. That began the scramble for other vaccine contracts that Canada has been on ever since. And as we have talked about many times here, sitting in the basement, that effort is improving, but it hasn't been great. And it's imposed real political costs on the government. I think the fundamental issue here, though, is what the hell were we doing partnering with China to begin with? That is the key testimony that came out last week, that it seems to have been, in the eyes of Canadian vaccine experts, deliberate manipulation of China's access to supplies, including samples, that they withheld from us basically to screw us over. There's no nicer way to put that. I could gussy it up with a few dozen more words, but that's the crux of it. China had us over a barrel. They had the ability to export the uh, the, the key supplies and, and samples and whatnot to other countries. They did export key supplies to other countries. They cut us out of the loop because they don't like us. All of this happening against the backdrop of our continuing conflict with China over the two Michaels, Meng Wanzhou of, of Huawei, the broader Canada-Chinese relationship with which has soured. This is incredibly predictable. And if you are a Canadian official who thought it was a good idea to put most of our eggs, not absolutely all of them, but most of them in the Chinese basket, you're a moron. China has been hitting us with all kinds of levers, agricultural exports, our citizens in China, investment in this country, warning of diplomatic consequences if, if we don't toe the line. They are also putting a million people in concentration camps and crushing the life out of Hong Kong. We know what these guys are. We know what the ruling regime in Beijing is. And we decided, you know what? These are the partners for us. China knew that complicating our vaccine effort was going to kill Canadians. Vaccines save lives. Flip that equation around. An absence of vaccines means death. China knew that. They withdrew access to our vac uh, to vaccines. They put Canadian lives in danger. And by complicating our vaccine program, they almost certainly got Canadians killed. And guess what? This was blindingly obvious and incredibly predictable. Anyone could have seen this coming, except apparently our federal government. Like I said, folks, when this is all over, there's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be a reckoning. And this is one part of the equation that our federal liberals are going to have a hell of a lot to answer for.